dun 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 Hello, welcome to another Getting Projects Done with me, Chris. Today, taking a break from other projects to actually start a a new project with an old model. New project, old model. Basically, I have, I've been working through like these off few days, like the Fridays I've been doing like Eldar. So sticking with that theme, I'm working on a Wraith Lord. But I'm not just simply going to um, basically, you know, put the Wraith Lord together and, you know, be done with it. I will initially pick these up because I have two, two of them to do. And I wanted to do reposes. Now, normally, whenever I'm playing with uh, Wraith Lords in my list, I usually only ever take them with the sword and the two basic weapons. I don't ever really, um, you know, do them with, like, other heavy weapons and stuff like that. So I'm not too concerned about that stuff. And with the swords, and they're such nice big, you know, swords for these models that... You know, I want to do some some really interesting poses, some swordsmith type of poses, and you can see here I've already gotten stuff started. Uh, currently, there's nobody in the Discord right now, so if anybody feels like joining me in the Discord, feel free. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. So right now, I actually have this part here under this little clamp. Is using a paper towel just to protect some of the um, the bits. For whatever reason, this torso was not going together very well. I don't know why, but yeah. So you guys can kind of see see the top part here all lines up nicely, but the back side it's got this big old gap in there. And if I apply a bit of pressure, the gap disappears, and I can hear kind of a stickiness. So actually, I'm going to hit this with a little bit more glue. Let's see if we can't m melt this the way we want to. So I'm just going to use a little bit more glue here. Just to make sure this all comes up together nicely. Now mind you, in the center here, it does look like it's pretty darn close. So... But when I use a bit more glue, apply a bit more pressure, yeah, it comes together a lot nicer. So I'm going to put it right back in. Let's see here. Can I get this to sit nice and even? No. Let's try it this way. Yeah, it's a little better. Just something to conti uh, continuously apply pressure to these parts. Would like it if they sat just a little bit more flush in the surface here. Yeah, that's not bad. I also want to make sure the the shoulders meet up nicely. I'm not too concerned if there's any bits of plastic kind of exposing through because we can always clear that off after. Not too concerned about that. Yeah, would would like it if it sat a little bit more like that in the in the clamp all this reminds me is that I, I should pick up some more of those little small little clamps there's you see them in like the dollar stores and stuff like that they just come in handy when you are assembling some projects and they're not going together how you want yeah I can still see some light poking through so I'm going to keep the pressure on that part hopefully it doesn't mar it up at all george hints hi how are you doing today i am doing well thank you for asking yeah i'm just working on uh eldar i'm gonna do a repose of this kit so i actually have two of them to do so i'm gonna go for two different poses now when i'm talking about the poses uh, I'm basically using the inspiration of um, samurai so i've been looking up 
examples of poses of samurai with their sword and that's the kind of kind of vibe i want to go with uh for this wraith lord well for both of them really it's kind of what i did for the um for the wraith knight for the wraith knight it was a di slightly different story it was more or less wanting to go for uh, a pose similar to uh Conan the Barbarian. That's kind of the pose I was looking for with that one. If you're curious about what that looks like, uh, you can probably check out the Instagrams. I think there's a few pictures of it on the Instagrams. But yeah, just gonna work on projects, get them done. Basically because, I mean, like, you know, Eldar getting a bit of an update want to get to some of those projects when they come available and yeah you know how she goes let's score the interior here I always score the parts just to make sure they meet up nicely once gluing occurs Basically, I'm just going to work on this torso, and then I'm going to start working on the legs. The legs and the arms really are where most of this conversion is going to happen. It's really one leg, because I want one leg to be mostly straight, but the other leg will have a bend in it. Now, as you see, both, both parts of the figure, both legs are straight, so we are going to have to um, saw away... A knee joint here and then rebuild it afterwards and probably have to repin this as well and then the other arm thankfully it has a few options like a you know like a pistol grip open hand and a closed fist and the hand that holds the sword is in pretty decent shape although we might have to uh, adjust the wrist and the arm I think where I want the sword I think it's gonna be a straight back kind of pose so that'll be that one because i think with this one i want it to be uh like a slight kind of like running kind of pose but with his sword arm back so his for uh, his other arm will be kind of forward how that goes i don't know i mean once we start really kind of getting into the pose um now i have looked up some images of like you know stances with samurai and stuff like that and that's the kind of thing i want to emulate with this so yeah but right now we're just cleaning off the torso before we get to the leg before we have to start sawing up some legs it shouldn't be too difficult i've done this kind of thing before i usually don't do a lot of converting of my models um I find conversions to be uh, a necessity as far as, you know, if you're looking for a particular model in your army or you want a particular look to your army or, you know, if you're doing like uh, competition type work and, you know, you want to obviously uh, bring your A game, as it were, to your conversion work. And, you know, so I usually don't do too much conversion and I don't really consider uh, like when you're basing a model I don't really consider that any kind of conversion work even though you know it can be kind of heavy and extensive as far as you know how much effort you put into like assembling bits and creating something and you know I usually don't consider those conversions when you're rebasing a miniature or or just basing a miniature, I should say. I usually don't, you know, get too worked up about that. And yeah. conversions typically are, you know, the domain of characters and army and these kind of things. It's not usually. It's usually not something that you know too many people concern themselves with. I'm not even sure really if like a, a simple repose is a conversion 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Is a con what do you consider conversions? Like anytime you deviate from the of the official stand, uh, the way the product was intended. So a repose is a conversion, or is a conversion like when you're taking all sorts of different bits and you're slapping them together? Because I know like. A lot of times, you know, people have various opinions as far as what's what in this hobby. So I'm just kind of curious. Not that it really kind of affects, you know, how I go about my projects or anything like that, but you know what I mean. Now we use our clippers here and get this angle. This funny little angle here, this little piece of nub. Right there. But yeah, that's it. And of course, once it gets painted, it'll get painted in the, the default Samhan color scheme, uh, just so that it matches the rest of my army. Kind of a sad day today for anybody who's following news and such. Famous person of vast popularity over generations passed today. For those of you watching this after the fact, um, apparently. Betty White passed today. And I was uh, pretty comfortable with the belief that she would outlast me. And yet, here we are. But, yeah. Do, 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 do. Right. I think that's clean and we'll let that sit a little longer yeah when I apply a little bit of pressure I don't hear any clicking anymore so I think it's gone as far as it's gonna go I did kind of scuff up the front damn it Damn it. Oh well. All right. Um, while we're still waiting for that part to cure, got that piece ready, that piece ready. We're going to get the little wings ready. The little wing backs. I think for many Eldar players, these little wings have seen their ways to many conversions over the years. I don't even know how old this kit is. It's pretty old, right? It's gotta be a print date on it, right? Oh, camera. Oh, it's got a number. Oh, oh, six. Oh, six is when this sprue came out. Good God. Oh, six. What were you, what were some of you doing? In 06. Wonder if I should use this bit on the back of the helmet. A little spiky bit thing. <clears throat> Maybe. I don't have it. I don't think I have it on my other Wraith Lord. My other Wraith Lord, though, I picked it up. Uh, second hand it was already pre-magnetized and everything and I scored it for like 10 bucks at an auction and I was like damn so I painted that one right away and I actually kind of got into this little mindset of it was actually kind of cool not having to do any kind of work assembling the 
model, especially because it was already magnetized and you know it was available with all its options and I was kind of into that for a little while. I was like, yeah, you know what? Buying pre-assembled models is kind of kind of cool. I'm actually okay with it. Usually like in the past, whenever I've acquired models secondhand, I was always looking for the ones that were you know not touched right they were still new in the box unassembled ready to go that way i could do whatever i wanted right i was free to do anything i wanted with the model but then it's like well if it's already assembled all you gotta do is paint it all i was interested in was painting it you know so like why not Rid of nubs. Of course, as I'm recording this, it is the is it 31st? 31st today. I don't even know what fucking day it is. Yeah. Hey man, sneaking around my own house trying to catch up on this street. <laughs> now I'm just uh, putting together the torso right now of the Wraith Lord, and then we're going to get to some of the actual hard work and carefully try not to destroy uh, the legs of this guy. <clears throat> try not to. Who knows? For me, the stream starts at 2200 hours and usually end at midnight. Oh, so by the time we end, it's going to be New Year's for you. Oh. Well, then I guess we'll have to end it with a Happy New Year to the rest of you. For everybody who's watching this live. Everybody watching this after the fact. Well, Happy New Year's to you anyway. But it's not live. This doesn't have the same impact, does it? If you're watching this out a week later, it's like, yeah, it's New Year's. New Year's is so long ago. It's a week.
Kim, we got a bunch of family here, so not a very happy New Year's, but all, but traditions and all. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, it's family, right? Supposed to enjoy family time. I mean, I enjoy my family time. Mind you, not a whole lot of drama in my side of the family, so usually not too big a deal usually whenever you have a bunch of drama in a family it's usually when everybody despises you know get togethers and shit right uh kim so we're, i'm sneaking upstairs every chance i get and have a few joints to not get too so ticked off <laughs> family's not wondering where you're going to every time all right yeah, I smushed up this front. I'm going to have to reshape this front of the torso. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Hi. Hey. What's up? Would you like coffee in a little bit? Sure. Okay. I just wanted to check. Then we'll just finish it. Uh, I finished probably about an hour ago. Know if I want some coffee. I'm not a big coffee fiend, but I do drink a lot of it. <laughs> Mainly because I mean, like, I don't drink a lot of like soft drinks or anything like that. So, you know, just drink a lot of coffee. Don't drink a lot of booze. I drink a lot of stuff. There we go. I think that torso looks a little better now. It had a bit of a, a smush. A bit of a smushing. Smushing. Alright. So now this piece goes right here. Okay. It feels like it lines up properly. This piece goes onto the back here. This feels like it might give me problems. It feels almost like it snaps into place. But I think I'm going to have to shave that down round off the corners of the pegs i think jeez i can't even pull it apart now there we go yeah we're gonna have to take those down a bit so this all meets up nicely yeah 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 green leaf terrain no soft drinks only hard drinks for men yeah pretty much yeah, I don't do a lot of soft drinks, or as uh, as they're known here in Canada, pop. Yeah, I don't do a lot of those. Mainly because, obviously, the sugars, you know, Chris has got to watch out for the sugars, how much sugar he intakes. So, yeah, that's pretty much why. So it's just a lot of coffee and tea for this guy. A little bit boring, but... The alternative is uh, they take my feet, and uh, you know that's that's not really um, you know what I want to do. <laughs> I would think that's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, I don't want them taking my my foots, so you know, yeah. <laughs> Kim, I drink a lot of specialized coffee from local roster. I never buy the supermarket stuff. I always get whole bean and drink about 15 to 25 cups a day. Oof. Well, you got me beat, dude. I don't drink that much. I drink, um, like, I make myself a pot. Shit. I don't know. I do one pot in, in the early morning and then maybe a pot in the evening, and then that's it. And that's usually my coffee consumption. You know what? Let's glue this piece in place. Can we glue this piece in place? I don't think this will disrupt anything if I do it now. Now nah, let's wait. Let's round this off. Get this ready. But yeah. Green leaf. Beat your wife and hate your neighbors like a man. Jeez. That's some fucked up advice, bud. <laughs> That's fucked up. How fucked up is fucked up? That's fucked up. Beat your wife. Good God, man. 
that's um that's not terribly good good advice i'm not to say and usually adam you've got good advice but i'm gonna have to call into question that one beat your wife good grief Let's see how these pieces meet up now. So basically all I did was I kind of just went around the edge of the holes here and around these little short pegs on the back. Hopefully this meets up a little bit better. Uh, still pretty, pretty tense. I can see gap, the gap through it. No. Uh, let's open up the back pegs here a little bit more. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Kim, I can do two, three double espressos and go to bed. I don't react to caffeine at all. Hoof. Hoof. That's a lot. Of, dude, I, if I drink coffee past nine, I have a hard time getting back, getting to bed. But I'm old. But you're not too far behind me. <laughs> at least I think. Pretty sure you're not too far behind me. But yeah, that's... It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. But mind you, what's the alternative, right? I mean, you're gonna drink fucking booze or something like that. Yeah, that's no good. It's no good at all. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm just going around. I'm just carving out the uh, the hole a bit more, so that this part will just basically sit right up against the the torso. Just like, oh, almost. Oh, that's pretty darn close. Um, now it's shaving down just a little bit more. Um, I guess that's not too bad, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, let's take this, take this down just a little bit more. Now, if these were simply purely for gaming, yeah, I really wouldn't spend this much time. But, because I am filming it and showing you guys my process for this kind of crap, I may as well try and do a good job, right? May as well. Uh, Greenleaf train, hmm. Just a little tiny beats. <laughs> well, you know what, Adam? I'm going to tell the old lady you said that. I'm going to tell on you. And next time you're over, uh, she might have words for you. She might. She just might. You never know. God damn it, that little gap there is bugging me. Right there in the middle. I mean, I can't see light poking through. Well, I can kind of see light poking through. Which means that the part... I'm thinking I'm going to take these pegs down a bit. Oh, dang it. Let's go. Yeah, let's just take them right down. I mean, I could just clip them right off. They're really more just guides at this point, just so you line those parts up. But still, kind of annoying. Oop. Somebody's jumped into the Discord. Who goes there? All right, I think my mic is muted. <laughs> oh, shit. Gotta unmute my mic. Hold on. Hold on, I can see the boop. Hold on, boop. Hold on. 
There we go. Can you hear me now? Yep. Sweet. How's Mr. Boop today? And how'd you like it? Did you? I'm liking the Mandalorian. I'm liking Book of Boba. I'm liking these more Western crime series. Yeah, definitely. It is definitely uh, a Western, eh? I mean, like the original Star Wars, Part Four, I guess is where we're at with that. But that's a Western. Uh, I also watched the 30 minute Boba Fett documentary they had on Disney Plus. Uh, I did not realize this, but when Boba Fett walks around in the movie, you hear spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just one of those things where I, uh, you know, I didn't register. Yeah. You know, he's only on screen for about six minutes. Yeah. Between two movies. Yeah. I I too did not notice that he had a spur sound and I've watched Empire Strikes Back a million times. And yeah. I don't want to spoil Mandalorian, but guys, if you haven't seen Mandalorian, you're kind of hitting that, you know, grace period where uh, spoilers are no longer uh, <laughs> spoilers are fair game. Well, it has been at least a year since the yeah, second season. There's like what six people in Captain Carl. <laughs> um, so, in the original movie, Bubba Fett walks around with spur noises. Um, his his three second you know scene where you only see his feet in a particular episode. You know when he when he's in the desert. Yeah. You know, trying to not spoil the scene. Uh, yeah. Spurs sound are playing. Yeah. Yeah, once it's pointed out to you, you just hear it everywhere. But yeah, I never really noticed. Because typically, when he's walking around, like in in the original movies, when he's walking around, somebody's talking to him. He might not have many lines, but somebody like you know when you know no disintegration or like when the field team came, you know they're talking. You don't really pick up on it, but you sit somebody mentioned like I watched the documentary. They mentioned it. I went back to watch the scene, and I was like, wow. You like sit there and you really listen. You can't. Cause he, um, he gets six minutes of screen time between two movies, but most of that he's standing still. Yeah. Cause he's being, you know, he's when he was the first scene when he's first introduced in the movie. Cause apparently he came out in the Christmas special before the movie came. Out. Yeah. Um. When he's on the deck of the Star Destroyer, he's standing still. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously when he's flying his ship, the scenes where you see inside the cockpit, he's, you know, flying the ship. The only times you really see him walk are when he's talking to uh, Darth Vader over, you know, Han Solo getting frozen and that brief two-second um, trot from out of the corner of the screen. When they're at Cloud City and Darth Vader surprises them at dinner, the dinner table or like a big long table, <laughs> where he, he kind of walks out of the corner and takes like three steps. So you don't really get to hear it that often. But I went back and watched. It's like, oh wow, you know, first. <laughs> yeah, I know it's pretty. It's pretty hilarious, like how that you just never you never noticed it, right? I mean, like it's just. It's just kind of hilarious, and it's it goes to I think um, you know like in movies like where they have like CGI. If you don't notice the CGI, that was good CGI. Yeah. And, and I think this is the same kind of thing where it, it's good sound editing if you didn't notice it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot I of fun. Really like it. Leading into with Mandalorian and the Book of Boba, 
um, these like pri Western, I don't want to say like they're full on Western because um, they're like the specific genre where you're following like the outlaws. Yeah. So that Mandalorian might be a quote unquote good guy, um, but he is not necessarily the paragon of like. He has no problem shooting people. Yeah. You know, he's not, um, he's not a Western, like, uh, shoot the guy, uh, the Andy Griffin show, <laughs> one with, uh, the, the, the silly, goofy, like, sheriff deputy, and yeah. he's trying to, you know, he is more, he is a darker, more like Clint Eastwood kind of, you know, he might be the good guy, the hero in the story, but he's not afraid to, you know, do some pretty sketchy things, you know. Um, I'm enjoying it. Same. I'm really liking it. I think it was it episode two comes out Tuesday. Yeah. Excited for that. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, we've been waiting a long time for this, for this show to come out, and yeah, because they. They teased it at the end of Mandalorian Season 2, which was about a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time for this one. Alright. Let's have a look at these legs. like how they're I was never super into the Mandalorian I mean I think they're cool I'm not one of those guys that goes and gets the tattoos or symbol on their arm <laughs> yeah no neither am I but um I really like how because everybody knew they were a warrior culture and stuff but I really like how they're leaning into um they're not necessarily like a one to one the cowboys but they are kind of like the space cowboys yeah, well, Star, I mean, Star Wars kind of is that anyway. Uh, I guess a better term would be, like, the space gunslinger, because, you know, yeah. they always got, like, two pistols, and... Yeah, the gunslingers. That's the, uh, the more appropriate analogy for them. Yeah. You know, if they were, you know, a traditional Western character, if Mandalorian was a traditional Western character, you know, they'd have, like, the two pistols... Even though, uh, did they give the Mandalorian like a name? Yep. Where is Kevin? Yeah, he has a name. Remember what it was? Uh, Jin Darren or some shit like that. Yeah, I think he's. The, I think he's the only Mandalorian you see in this show that isn't sh like using people. <laughs> because when they come to save him. Season one, you know the very early episode. The other Mandalorians come to back them up. Spoiler alert: this season one's even fucking older. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're all you know aside from the one that everybody likes with the big you know heavy rotating blaster. Yeah. All the other ones, too late, too blast. He's the only one that ever uses one. Yeah. Well, Boba. Only ever uses his rifle. Yeah, he has a rifle. Yeah. He doesn't really use his pistols much, as opposed to like the dad who you know used the pistols all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought, thought it was, it was I, interesting because when you see the other Mandalorian with pistols, they always have two. Yeah, it feels like they always have two. Well, I'm sure it's you know they don't want to die from a lack of shooting back. So it's better to have more guns than, you know, anything really, right? I would yeah. assume that's the philosophy behind those characters. Yeah, because uh, in Star Wars, they're obviously... Well, I don't want to say there aren't projectile weapons, because, like, the Tusken Raiders use projectile weapons. So... But, um, they're using... Most of them are using blasters, so there's no, like, need to really reload... 
and there's not really any, like, yeah, there's recoil in the movies, but it's, like, not, like, you know, shooting a real gun recoil, so. I guess there isn't really any downside to holding two. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> then I thought about it, and I was like, well, Clint Eastwood never really used two guns in his. could also just be a design thing because they gave him that uh, really long I don't know what the hell they're pulse rifle or whatever they call it his big rifle yeah uh, I don't even know what that's called yeah the one with the little fork on the end yeah yeah the one that also can be turned into like elect an electric phase or whatever yeah well, my favorite is the um, the episode where he's getting his shit back from the uh, Jawas he ends up just disintegrating a whole bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. No, there's just there's just so much fun in Mandalorian. And it's not a show that is, you know, a terribly deep story or anything like that. It's not like, you know, addressing any kind of, you know, particular kind of social issue that, you know, like... Um, some other uh, sci-fi properties will do and you know it's just you know an adventure that's all it is just an adventure adventure western comedy and I'm really enjoying it yeah it looks like Book of Boba um, won't be as action I mean there's action in it but it, it feels like cause uh well you know it feels like there's gonna be more narrative I guess I don't know. More intrigue. Well, that's what I'm just getting from the first episode. Well, first be because if you look at the director's w previous work, that's not hit deep narratives and, you know, having very slow episodes, stuff like that, do not seem like his M.O. Robert Rodriguez is um, an action director. That's true. I was, it was just feeling like maybe it won't, but it was just feeling like maybe this might be like Star Wars Sopranos. Mm. It could go that Maybe route. Maybe it will just be another, you know, full on action pack that he made. Yeah. Because Either way, I'm like. So. Well, because, like, even the episode that. Um, where Boba Fett um, rejoins up with Mandalorian on that world with Grogu and everything like that. That episode was directed by Roger, Robert Rodriguez. Huh. Which is why in, in this when you kind of think about like all the other shows, that episode has a very different feeling to it. Because yeah, Robert, Robert uh, directed that episode. It was probably his, um, his application to do the show itself. He said, well, here, let's, let's see what you do at direct an episode. And then they give him, the whole show, you know, <clears throat> and probably because you know he is—he seems like one of those guys that is very enthusiastic about Boba Fett, and you know, I—I I would suspect everybody feels like he's probably going to treat the property well, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm not like saying like I wouldn't watch Space Western Sopranos. <laughs> No, Space Western Soprano sounds fun. Yeah, but I would think I'd be happy either way because either it's gonna, it looks like it's gonna be like you know Mandalorian but with Boba Fett, or Space Star Wars Sopranos. I'm like, I'm on board either way. That it's not like there's much else to watch anyway. <laughs> true. Very Even very if true. Isn't the best thing since sliced bread. I guarantee it's going to be a lot better than most other shows out there. On that note, I will be right back. So I have to have to put something get it ready to uh, do reviews tonight. So I'll be back in like five ten minutes. No, don't leave, boo. 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 Don't go. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, 
Kim, but it's mostly espresso, and no matter what the myth says, the filter coffee has a lot more caffeine than espresso. The longer the water uses through our use through the coffee, the more caffeine. And espresso only has 20 seconds of infusion time. Missed the U in a boot. In a boot. <laughs> the U in a boot. Sorry, I was out for 10 minutes. What I miss? Nothing. Just me and Boop talking about Mandalorian and Book of Boba. All right. So, the inspiration for the pose is a samurai. Now, it's an inspiration. I'm not copying a direct position or anything like that. But I do want this guy to kind of look like he's charging, right? So, it's kind of like he's got his sword arm back and his other arm kind of coming forward. One leg will be up while the other leg is extended. You know, like he's like in a full charge forward it's a, probably a little bit more like an anime kind of you know naruto type of ninja type of you know pose i suppose now the sword arm is the right hand so if i want right because you can't see they should have did it so that that the sword hand could be the left or the right. Because they have, like, the gun hand. And the gun hand is the right hand, but his left hand... Apparently he's, apparently he doesn't use a gun in his left hand. Why is that? I don't know. But apparently, that's a thing. So... I'm just trying to think of like what would be cool for the other hand. Do I want it to be like a fist as his other hand's coming to the back? Or do I want it open or maybe, you know, reversed? Like he's like kind of like in a block? I don't know. So it's his right hand. So the right arm is going to be extended and back. Because that's the way I'm going to have it. He's like he's running and he's got his sword back. So like when he does like a leap, he's bringing it up and he's going to do a chop kind of thing, right? That's... The imagined scenario. So th for that to look natural. Uh, which which leg would be straight? Would it be the left leg or the right leg would be straight? If you're running with your right arm straight back, holding a sword. Uh, I guess really which one feels more natural? I guess it would be the left leg, right? The left leg would be up and bent. Well, the right leg would be straight, or would it make more sense if his left leg was straight and his right was up? I guess really it's kind of how you imagine a natural kind of walk, right? Because typically when you walk, your right arm and your left leg are forward, right? And that's the way we kind of naturally kind of... Sorry, I'm, I'm miming the motion here, but it's so that I can kind of work out in my head how this pose should work and i think yeah i think his left leg would be straight his right leg would be crooked up and his sword arm back and his other arm coming forward like that yeah i think that's i think that's where we're gonna go so left leg is this one so we'll clean this and we'll get it ready the the gate on these guys they can either be standing straight up or kind of have a stance combat stance to them um, I'm thinking that the legs would actually be kind of close together if they're in a full run I think yeah so basically this leg here we're gonna cut just below the knee joint and then probably yeah, probably just below the back of the knee here so it'll be a nice shallow cut in here. Now, do I have my razor saw handy? Oh, I do. I can see it. I can see my saw. So I'm going to clean up this leg so that we can kind of keep moving forward here. And yeah. Yeah, I think we have a game plan. I think that's that's the plan. Is he, yeah, the one leg will be up. 
His right arm will be straight back. His left hand, I'm not sure what, what his hand will be doing. Because I, I kind of like the idea that his arm is kind of coming forward, like, you know, and he's, and he's got his fist. If his hand was open, uh, it would probably look kind of cool too, especially if it was kind of like in a block kind of thing, or kind of coming back maybe. Or maybe just kind of straight out, right? Like he's kind of like, you can do a chop, you know? I don't know. You're back? Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, I'm just going over the ideas for how I'm going to pose this guy. So, I don't know if you've been listening to what I've been jabbering on about, but... Um, I, I was helping mom from the computer. Yeah. That help? So, basically, I want this Wraith Lord... Well, both Wraith Lords, because I have two Wraith Lords to do. And... I want them to be posed more like uh, samurai, or in stances like uh, of, you know, somebody who wields a sword kind of thing, right? So anybody who, you know, like my Wraith Knight, I posed him inspired by Conan. So he's in a Conan pose. Whereas with these Wraith Lords, um, this one here, I intend to have kind of like he's in a run. Like he's running forward. And yeah. basically what's going to happen is his right arm will extend back, holding the sword. And his right knee will be bent up. And then so his left leg will be straight. And so it's like he's leaping, kind of charging forward with his sword. You know, that kind of, you know, it's, it's that famous kind of like, like Naruto or whatever, right? Where they're charging forward and going to do a big, Hassan chop with their sword. Oh, the blaster, the Mandalorian's like right here. There's like a little force on there. It's called a phase pulse blaster. A phase pulse blaster. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they just threw a bunch of words in front of it. In front of blaster. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of like Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they did it there to differentiate it because uh, this shoots like a cartridge or uses like a cartridge style energy cell or something. Yeah. Well, I guess we're left to assume that when he sets it to disintegration, it, it consumes a little bit of power, right? Because mm -hmm. it seems like um, that's when he you see him expending ammo, right? Is when he's disintegrating people. So you doing anything for New Year's? I have some little party down for you. Don't yeah, know. right on. Gamer friends or just normal friends? Mm, family mostly. Mostly, yeah. That's all right. I'm talking to friends on the internet. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah, well, normally I would have like friends come, but it's it's mm, you know COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of throws that, a bit of a dampener on that. That and, you know, about a week ago, I wasn't sure if I had it or not. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, we're just uh, hanging out with friends tonight. Usual. I, I'm not really one for, like, you know, the bar scene or anything like that. I don't give a shit about that stuff. But we go to the bar as friends as well. Right. No friends, because I just kind of didn't want to do anything, because I got sick, I wasn't going to have social. I, <laughs> I, I also find, too, that New Year's with just friends, you end up in a lot of drama, because everybody ends up drinking way too much, and then everybody starts fucking fighting, and blah, blah, blah. People arguing. Couples fighting. I'm not super big into Funko Pops, but there is a Funko Pop of Boba Fett sitting on Jabba's throat. <laughs> that must be new. 
I did find it somewhat funny that the Gamori and the Book of Boba look like they're just body painted. They're just what? They're just straight, you know, body painted green. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they're just big muscular pig duders. I mean, you know. At first, when they're getting attacked, I thought his pig duders just bailed on him. Because <laughs> you didn't see them for a bit. Then all of a sudden they show up and say, like, oh, okay, they're, they're, still work they're still working for them. Well, they're not in their prime anymore. They see they have a little bit more to do, though. They <laughs> got their own time. They'll get there. You just have to ever give them one. <laughs> don't body shame Gamorans. No, don't body shame <laughs> Also, I also like the fucking Rod the Rodian at the, at the camp. <laughs> fucking uh, fucking tattletales. What happened to him? Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what? Normally, I'd feel bad for him. Just like, no way, fuck. Yeah, fuck you, guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. He fucking snitches get stitches. Of course, stitches aren't going to be able to put them back together, but. <laughs> yeah, I like that one though. That was pretty funny. All right, let's. Uh, get to some cutting here okay so left leg is going to stay straight there's a really cool statue of a tuscan raider in the finale because of reasons yeah well it's an art fx so it's by koto tukia which is a japanese like figures like like a statue holy fuck you're not telling me about these guys are you no i'm just describing it for everybody <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know who they are <laughs> yeah i know who they are i actually don't have any do i no i don't have any well i have some for just video game stuff but i was looking around and all the scholar stuff i have is like cheap stuff target because most of it is from when i was a kid so or, or there's, you know, I have a Lego X-Wing with a Lego Y. Those are not necessarily cheap. But I would like a, I would like a proper Star Wars collectible release. Right. So I was thinking about it. Uh, I find it something interesting. Especially the fact that they're, they're like blaster or projectile guns. I think they're some kind of projectile, kind of like how a Wookiee uh, bow cap is a uh, projectile weapon. And or it's implied it's implied whatever comes out of that gun is not normal blaster stuff. I also like uh when they're paying tribute. And now that pelt that guy had, was that a Wookiee pelt? I don't I don't remember what he said it was. Yeah, I don't know if he does. I had this acrylic rod from I guess when I was doing my vampire or my bombers or something. But I've got these giant ass neodymium magnets. Going back to the uh, Tuscan Raiders real quick. Um, Jesus. I think their like rifles they use in the classroom are really cool because they remind me of like the Afghan like the Zale rifles, like the really old like ornate ones. Yeah. I would I would assume uh, Boba, his um, the black of his outfit, that's because of the Raiders. I feel like they want to tie in something with that. Yeah, I think that's that's what it is, because it seems like he's part of the tribe now, kind of thing, right? They definitely they are. It seems like they are. They they might not be. Uh, maybe a warrior culture i don't know they never really expand too much granted mandalorian book of boba they expand on like what exactly like who exactly tuscan raiders are how yeah. they live because before then they're only you know presented as antagonists to like humanistic screen time yeah so 
but it seems like they are a semi warrior culture where they you know they respect strength no matter who you are. Because the first first reason is in uh, Mandalorian when Mandalorian goes to see them about killing that giant worm, um, they don't immediately try and you know fucking kill him or whatever capture. Yeah. So that they know who he is. I mean, I should just read it. The, the, the um, Disney Plus Star Wars stuff has been like a hit. Like the new trilogy, kind of a miss. A little bit. Solo and Rogue One, okay. Fun watches. Um, but Mandalorian, and it looked like the Book of Boba was going to be like a home run. <clears throat> I like Rogue One way better than Solo. I mean, I liked Rogue One more than Solo. I was just, I, I, like, Rogue One wasn't like, oh my god, I love this. <laughs> it was good, though. I won't say it, it wasn't good. I wasn't like, oh my god. I think that's what you're saying. It was good. It's a good watch. I recommend watching it to people. getting through there can you see where where I'm cutting there yeah you can kind of see it once you're coming back from the back of the knee oh excuse me I think what I need is like a miniature cable saw or something. Do they make those? Like small table, table saws? Balls. Yeah, planers. Uh, I want to say no, but they do make little miniature tool sets like as a novelty, so like I wouldn't put it past them to have made one. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like they make little miniature tool sets you can use. Um, it's a really big thing in Japan, and it's like little, like little ovens that make like actual, like you can bake actual cakes with them, but they're they're like the size of like a Space Marine, like oven. Like you're baking cakes that literally like made for ants. <laughs> right. Like, I wouldn't put it past because they do make like little like building sets that you can like that size too so I wouldn't put it past to have a uh, a, a small t a very small table it went into the knee here on this side shit on topic of Star Wars, since there's going to be a Star Wars topic there, um, there's Star Wars cookbook. Someone at trial. <laughs> a Star Wars cookbook? Yeah. Well, they have a cookbook for Galaxy's Edge, which lets you make some of the foods that they make at the park, in the Star Wars, like, park. Mm -hmm. But, um, they have a cookbook that's supposed to be themed around, like, Star Wars in general, like Star Wars gingerbread cookies, um, the Bonta Milk Hot Chocolate. <laughs> That's funny. Mudhorn Eggnog and stuff. So. They have a holiday one and a Galaxy's Edge. They're themed around that food that they, you can get there. No. 
can't wait to talk to him for it. It's one of those moments where I kind of wish when Disney Plus would just do what that Netflix does and when they release a season or something they just delete all the episodes. <laughs> yeah. But then I realized that there wouldn't be a reason to subscribe more than like a month at a time. No. Shit, no. That's, that's why basically all the streaming services, right? They don't fucking, well, most of them anyway, don't do that. It's because big Netflix com- compensates for their releasing the, all the episodes at once for their stuff. It's just because they release so much crap every month. Like, it's like every week it feels like a good old uh, Netflix and there's a whole bunch of new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a uh, new Karate Kid. That's going to be fun. Wait, there's a new Karate War? Karate Kid. Oh, Karate Kid. I thought you said Cobra. Cobra. I, heard, I heard the K and, or the C and like, yeah. I think it might cut out and I was like, no. Yeah, the Cobra Kai. Gotcha. Been enjoying that one. That, was, that show's a lot of fun. Okay, we got the knee separated. <clears throat> so now the question becomes, how far back does this bend? Or is it gonna bend? I'm gonna have to get rid of all this little ribbing detail here. Because I want the knee to really be bent. Something like along those lines. Maybe more. thing I am surprised that I was uh, looking at like merch websites is they're still making Cara Dune stuff. But sure. They, they would have like wanted to pretend she didn't exist after you know they picked her up. So. Um, no, I don't think so. She's still part of the show. Well, the character I meant to ask is. Yeah. No, I'm I'm sure a lot of money changed hands for those royalty like likenesses, so mm-hmm. they're not likely to scrap that. And she won't get any screen time this season either. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't really see that happening. I mean, it's not really a huge loss. It's not like she's a great actress anyway, but... Well, because at the end of season two, it's implied that, you know, it's the only time I saw going back to... Uh, I don't remember what the name of that planet is. Yeah. When we started out on. Yeah. Well, as far as I understood it, um, that's where... where um, Carl Weathers, he's in charge of as well, isn't it? Because isn't he in charge of the uh, the the Bounty Hunter Guild? Yeah, no, he's in charge of the Bounty Hunter Guild. But uh, Boba Fett is still in the Bounty Hunter Guild. Or not Boba Fett. <laughs> Mandalorian. Yeah. They're all Boba Fett. Mando. <laughs> Mando. He's Mando. <clears throat> I'm thinking that this knee joint should come away from the from this thigh, so that it sits more evenly between the gaps. Damn it! Yeah, because I want it to occupy something like that. I want it to be re- not like you know steep angle like that. That'd be hilarious, but better than 90 degree, I think. Now I'm questioning all my life decisions. Yeah. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should remove this kneecap. This, this, you know, the, the plate that goes over the knee, 
and that should move because it doesn't make sense where it is. It only makes sense if his, if his knee is straight, but when his knee becomes bent, the knee pad being up there does not make sense. Yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to remove that knee. Son of a bitch. Which means I'm gonna have to remove all of this. And I'll probably have to rebuild the front part of this thigh above the knee. If I want to keep this knee shape. Could just as easily shape it all down and then sculpt a new knee. That sounds too much like work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're gonna we're gonna cut right down this knee joint bring that in while we're at it we'll probably just destroy all that back there because we can always re-sculpt that and you know make that detail back up yeah, if somebody made a little grogy patch where you have a like a Ops four helmet with like night vision goggles on it and like a little AR. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's fucking funny. <laughs> People love their AR fifteens, eh? You have forty five. <laughs> no, I think it's just an observation. I mean, after all the growth that we've gone through, he needs his emotional support AR. <laughs> <laughs> he needs his emotional support AR fifteen, yeah. In fact, I probably would have solved a lot of problems. <laughs> Which way we should go about this? That'd be a little too chill, probably, for me to tell, you know, when he fights the mudhorn, and he pulls out his vibro knife, it's like the last ditch thing, and it's actually vibrating really, really fast. Mm-hmm. I thought that would be his little touch, because, um, one, you don't see the vibro weapons too often in Star Wars media, outside of, like, video games, and in video games, they don't show it vibrating, they show it as a pick. But that's also probably a limitation of like old video games and you know RPGs graphics for like MMOs and stuff. Yeah. I just thought it was a neat little touch because you know they are quick to vibrate really quickly. <sighs> well, that's what they talk about like for uh, Eldar, the Banshee swords are supposed to be vibro blades. I think they all are? yeah they're all supposed to be like. Um, a monomo monomolecular vibro blade. They called it that because you know the sword. I guess mirror sword is just a type of sword. I always thought they were mirror blades or whatever. Well, mirror blades are different. Mirror blades oh, yeah. are used by the Exarchs. Somebody watching this like maybe show up for a close enough Star Wars. <laughs> maybe somebody might be sitting there going, "Yeah, wish you guys would shut the fuck up about this shit." Well, why are you talking about 40k and it's a uh, deep war? <laughs> so deep, so, so deep that they change it whenever the fuck they feel like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much, eh? But I mean. You know, I thought it was super deep lore to begin. Well, I mean, like, it, it's a lot of it's so heavily borrowed, right? Mm -hmm. oh, is that what I'm getting snagged on? It's like a piece of schmutz on my blade here, and I think that's what I'm getting stuck on here. My blade's old. It's rusty. It's a rusty blade. Clean your blade. Clean your blade. I haven't used this saw. In, pff, don't can't remember the last time I used it actually. I'm 
You see him band of brothers, right? Yep. And there's Danny for inspection. Um, Captain Sobel walking around, you know, inspecting them. They're, you know, the right holes and stuff. And he's like, you have a little bit of rust on your top. How, how do you expect to kill Germans when it's like that? Yeah. <laughs> your weekend pass has been revoked, sir. Apparently. Pull this off. Can't come off yet. Screwed up the cut. Came in at the knee. Slightly wrong angle. I'll change the subject from Star Wars movies to a Star Wars miniatures game. <laughs> sure. Uh, I would play Star Wars League if it had a, like a skirmish level kind of a, like way to play it. Because right now you play with units. And I don't mind playing with units. It, but, um... I would rather get a little band of heroes, like, that'd be more fun for me, seriously. Like, if somebody wanted to have a whole bunch of stormtroopers, yeah, but if I wanted to field, you know, Boba Fett and one or two other dudes, like bounty hunters, like, I would, I would love to be able to do that, and that'd be my army. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, like, Infinity, but, uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, so why not? Why not just play Infinity? Set, but that like model size was like maybe 10, 10 um, 15 models is kind of pushy. Would really love. Yeah. And I played Legion. I demoed Legion. I think it's fun, and I might get in on Star Wars Legion, but I would like something uh, smaller. You think it'd be better if it was more like more skirmish? Uh, no, I'm not saying that they need to make separate from Legion. Like keep Legion around, but I would like them to make a more skirmishy kind of game. Well, you want to see them do kill team? Yeah, Star Wars kill team. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, like you know that Infinity kill team kind of level of models. There's like ten, maybe fifteen pushing it. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Because I played Legion, and my local, a lot of people play Star Wars Legion, and I've thought about it, but what's been deterring me is, um, Stormtroopers are cool, but I don't want to have to paint, like, 30 of them. <laughs> because, um, and I have basically like, got a lot of models, like, even 40k, um, no matter how quote unquote posable they are because people like to go oh the, the, the current now old work kit super posable oh it's like ah yes my knife and fork pose where I rotated the arm ever so slightly to make a new pose <laughs> right yes they're cerebral they're so happy <laughs> like you know painting painting a box of stormtroopers yeah painting the same box of stormtroopers three or four times yeah. Now, I asked this question at the beginning of the stream. Maybe you can answer. Mm -hmm. Do you consider a repose a conversion? Um, am I physically having to cut and then sculpt to repose it, or am I literally rotating the arm? You're, you're having to cut and reattach things. Reattach. Is it all from the same kit? Sure, why not? Am I using green stuff? I don't know, what are we playing? Fucking 20 questions here? Jesus. Okay, well, I'm just trying to, like, gauge what you're thinking. If it's from the same kit, <laughs> I wouldn't. If I'm sitting there, like, um, I cut my space marine sergeant's arm that's holding the chain sword, like, at the elbow, so I could turn it a little bit. No, I don't. I don't consider grabbing the chain sword from like an assault marine kit and slapping it on a Kyler helmet a conversion I call right. that a part of one. Right. For me, a conversion is more heavily involved. 
Involving multi parts from other kits and such. Multiple parts from other kits. No, it doesn't have to be multiple parts from other kits. It could be now. How, how a does a lot of like chopping and then like physically sculpting? How, how does that is. differ from a kit bash? A kit bash is just taking parts from another kit and using it on a kit. So, for example, a kit bash would be like taking a Space Marine Rhino and then taking all of your extra parts from like an orc truck and just gluing them onto the Rhino and omitting certain parts of the Rhino. It's the act of combining two kits as opposed to actually cutting stuff out and modifying it. So you consider it a conversion and also high math. Uh, and I think people are too obsessed with labels on what things are. I'm <laughs> like, it is what it is. Sure. I don't really care. Yeah. But well, 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 here's a question. If you do like a head swap where you cut the head off of one mini and then glue it onto the other, is that a conversion or is that just a part swap? Because I'm just swapping a part from one mini to the other. Right, well, that, that's why I'm asking, because, I mean, like, I'm working on a Wraith Lord. I'm not using uh, anything other than the parts that are there, but I am cut, cutting them up, and I will be using green stuff to hide seams and, you know, hide the crimes, as it were. We need to get you on board with Team Sprugu. Have you ever heard of Sprugu? Because Sprugu just works about 10 times better than green stuff as either a filler or a... Oh, you're, ta you're talking about um, styrene goo? Uh, it's essentially you cut up your sprues yeah, you and then it's soaked in acetone until it's a homogenous goo. Yeah. And then you can use that as your filler. Yeah, I'm familiar with it, yeah. Uh, back when I was doing my Gundam. Uh, I was toying with the idea of uh, making a little batch of it. Actually, what I've been seeing people use it for is... Actually? Uh, if, they, if they need certain parts, I've been seeing people mold parts and then use it as a casting agent fairly successfully. Interesting. Yeah, because the, the plastic goes down to like a really th liquidy uh, consistency... Yep. Should make mold making pretty easy, yeah. That's pretty cool. Lord Jev, at my at my game shop, we call it dynamic posing, and it is worth the same extra points as a conversion. Hmm. Did you really, really want to get my opinion on the whole subject? No, I was just making conversation. I don't really care. Uh, I was going to say, I don't give a fuck what you call it. I'm like, I, I'm like, knowing Chris, I don't think he gives a shit. <laughs> I don't really care what you call it. I mean, if I do something, I'll call it either a part swap or a conversion. If I just took the head off one space marine kit, put it on another. But I really don't care. But also don't come up to me going, look, I took this space marine head from this space marine kit and put it on this space marine and then expect me to act all impressed. When well, I'm what if you took, like, like, a guard head and put it on a space marine, then would you be impressed? No. So not too much fucking impresses you is what you're saying. I'm saying something that I can go do in two minutes, clipping two pieces off of a screw and then putting it together does not fucking impress. Eesh. Are you not entertained? Yeah, fair. No, I'm not. <laughs> Good God. Well, that well, that's because you're a cynic and you've lost your sense of wonder. Yeah, I'm becoming a hobby cynic because so many people go, "Ooh, look at this," and I'm like, "Oh, cool! All you did was take one of the most modular kits DW Green to take a piece from another modular <laughs> kit from DW Green, put it in the socket." Yeah, Boop, we have a question. Are you going to get uh, angry enough that you're going to like go to GW headquarters with a fire hose because of this? Just be a cynic and just like beat their shit with a fire hose? Oh. No, 
well because it's that you know the people at PW coming up to me and going, look at this cool thing I picked. And it's just I mean, it's I mean, have you the assault marine on a tactical? Team. I mean, have you read like a white dwarf article? They wrote an entire article once about taking a chaos space marine head and putting it in the little hellbrew slot instead. And they're like, ooh, look at our conversion. Look how fancy we did this. And I'm like, you just took a head and put it in the thing. It's like the exact same size. I mean, this is... It's almost as like it was intentionally designed to be this way. Give me one of the hot, spicy topics today. <laughs> We're finishing the year with a bang. Is that a euphemism for we're fucking later? You two can. I mean, I'm going to go somewhere else. I, I mean, Chris, <laughs> if, if we do this, I just want to let you know I'm on top and you have to face away from me. Oh, so no, look, no really eye contact. To. See, I, I need to make eye contact for me to finish. <laughs> well, I really don't care if you finish or not. The important thing is if I do. Rude. That's rude. Kind of disappointing. No. And I'm going to be honest. No, lie. Contrast paint is kind of taking me, turning me into a saint. And it's not the concept of contrast itself. It's just when people use the spray and then they just put the paint on it. And they go, look. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say, I, I have been loving the contrast for the model boats. It makes my life really easy when doing, like, decks. So, I'm guessing what I'm saying is I'd be a horrible little weak ace Vulcan. <laughs> I can just see you, see you now. You're standing on, like, the field, smoking a cigarette, drinking a PBR, just telling the kids that they're all little shits. They're terrible at baseball. Damn, this is harsh. Matt, you don't have uh, you, know, Matt, you don't have beef with your fucking coach, do you? I have beef with my coach. Do you? <laughs> no, me and Mad Dog got along great. Now, I will say, at my local, there have been some people who have actually sat there and, like, done some great work. It's like, ooh, that's cool. And I'm just kind of sick and tired of the people who take a space marine kit, take another arm from another space marine kit, put it on that kit, and then go, look at this. So, when does a simple head swap become a conversion? I mean, when you in catch my... these hands, Chris, if you ask that question again. What? <laughs> so when you catch these hands, if you ask that question again. <laughs> I Why? Mean, I'm pretty sure it's like when you have to, when you have metal minis and you actually have to like cut the heads off of them and then glue them onto each other. Yeah, because I'm going like... to be impressed with your uh, little reposing here unless you go get a metal race load and chop it up okay <laughs> i have done it oh i know i'm being sarcastic oh well it is it is water i've treaded before i've also chopped metal Period. yeah chopping metal minis is a pain in the ass especially when they pull when they're like the arm you're cutting off is holding a gun just off the front of your chest it's all sculpted into the freaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Stress. Stress from back in the day. Will Hollick. Happy New Year from Finland. Well, Happy New Year, Will. Kim. It is still 23 minutes till New Year's here in Scandinavia, Nordic countries, to include you, Finnish guy. Saying it can't be out of work 
what I'm saying is, if you're proud of your work and all you did was put together a Pikmin file, don't fucking come up and show me. <laughs> Works. Scored that up so it was nice and good for glue. Where the fuck is my flat cloud? Oh, there it is. It's gonna get mad. I guess I think I told you that I have a 3D printed statue of uh, Poe Your, Pecan that I've been slowly working with. Your can? Poe Pecan. Oh. No, I don't think you did tell me. Oh, I do. Cool. She is somewhere in my hobby. Like shelf pile. Your, I've been slowly finishing. Your pile? This project that I haven't finished. Still want to read it. Most of the time it's because I got busy doing other stuff like work and that type of stuff. Right. Trying to lose that little pin. Take some super glue. The super glue I'm using today is Snap Again. Yeah, you guys watch the stream, you have to use super glue. Super glue. We well, have to use super glue in this instance because I'm gluing metal to plastic. Oh no, I was just talking about this specific brand. Oh. It seems funny because people on the internet have this weird fascination of having to buy the exact tool to first pretend the tutorial is using. Oh. Well, it helps because, you know, if you run into any kind of problems with, like, what you picked up, at least you can go, well, I was following your video, and, you know, you were using this, but as I was doing the same thing, but then I messed something up, what did I do wrong? And, you know, usually the person who's, you know, showing can, uh, you know, help the person, right? Because I get asked all the time, like, when a particular color or, you know, medium or whatever, right? And it's, so I was doing this, and I was doing this, but I, this went, this happened wrong. What did, what did I do wrong? And. So I answer as best I can with the available information at hand. But you also run into that, you know, well, what paints does this person use? Well, they're a really great painter, and this is the paints they well, use. So that, this must be the best paints what, what, to use. What exact brush do they use? What exact? Yeah. Super brand of super glue. All right. Well, I left that gap too big. So... I gotta take this down a bit. Also need to put a might, bend in it. Since I went with the helmeted up, I might print get another uh, with not wearing a helmet. I think I saw one where it's a demando. I might get that one. Right. Or, I'm sorry, it's not demando. Um. Lord Jev, why did you file the ends of the pin? Uh, typically, what ends up happening when you cut, um, well, I was using paper clip, but if you use like brass rod or whatever, typically whenever you use these little metal snippers, um, they put a little bevel on the end and that can interfere with making full contact inside the hole because if you think about like how flat the drill bit is, well, it's leaving that uh, indentation inside the plastic but when you cut the uh, metal it leaves a very sharp point right it's very triangular and so when I use the file on the ends of it I knock that down so it's more flat and I also will um, abrade the sides of the of the pinning material just so that the glue has something to grab a hold of rather than the you know the plating or whatever it is that's on the pin yeah that, that's why I, I use the file. It's, it's to knock down that end. So you can see it's... Like, you can see how it's, like, really bright on the point there? That's because it's it was filed flat. And that's just so that it makes more contact 
inside the hole. <laughs> so now I'm going to use two of these little pliers here, and I'm going to put a bend in this pin so that it comes back. I can extend this leg back a bit, and then, um, but I also need to shorten it up, so I've got to try and make that bend fuck pretty much right where it's I'm grabbing it really so hopefully I can do this if not I'll just pull it and just bend another pin shape it down uh, how can I do this here actually maybe I should bend it on the interior no let's grab it on the outside I'll put bend there in it so just like that I don't think I can do it comfortably on camera A little bit better so I have to put a little bend in it but now I need to shorten it but that is pretty close to the angle in which I want for the leg just like that but I'm going to shorten the pin up a bit so I knock off a couple millimeters KK thanks yeah no problem Yeah, so like for example here, I'm going to use these little snippers. I'm going to clip the pin right around there. I should, eh, maybe a little, a little more. We'll try it around here somewhere. So I'll use that. And then, there we go. And then you'll see, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but you'll see, you see how it's really dark on the very tip? That's because that's got that beveled edge. And then once I illuminate it under the light, you can see it better. But yeah. So it creates a beveled edge, and that just can uh, disrupt your contact when you're gluing things together. It's not a major thing. Like, if you never do it, it's not really going to affect you greatly. It's just a habit I'm into that, you know, just to ensure that uh, these, uh, these things all glue together right. Sorry, I'm just bending this pin a little bit more. I don't really want to bend it while it's mounted inside the plastic because it can end up just, you know, moving the plastic around, but yeah. Now, because I made that cut on that, I'm gonna file it flat. It only takes a couple passes to get that area flat. Where are you clipping this? What's that? So where are you clipping this very forward with? Just the sword and flamers. Sword. No, uh, you're not going to give them like a bunch of like hurricane catapults? No. Flamers. Uh, flamers, in my experience using the Wraith Lord uh, in this configuration, he's cheap uh, and effective. He's because basically whenever I'm playing with my Eldar, I'm usually running uh, a bunch of jet bikes. So I'm really, really squishy. Can hit really hard but really really squishy and i often like having uh close combat units to take the brunt of the in the inevitable close combat phase right usually it's wraith guard or it's banshee scorpions you know uh sometimes you're not making him the uh shooty wraith lord where he's got like four shuriken catapults on no no i don't go for shooty wraith lords i think that's a waste it's a waste of the points currently um, because, well, I guess b before they weren't really allowed to split fire, but nowadays they can split fire. Um, but it's just a really tough model. Toughness eight, right? And it soaks up a lot of fire. It takes a lot to bring these things down. They don't really suffer too much when they take a lot of, lo uh, a lot of wounds. So... Uh, do you like the Wraith Spear? Can you take that shoulder cannon? What's that? Yeah, he could take a heavy weapon. If you wanted him to like, shoot. Just yeah. Like, yeah, you can, you can slap a, whatever heavy weapon you want on him. Oh, but he, it's not the same one, because the Wraith Spear, the Forge World uh, Wraith Lord's model that's a psychic, 
to get a freaking beat down. Mm-hmm. I'd be kind of curious to see if that um, makes its way to the codex. Oh, what? Uh, Wraith Lord's getting beat down? No, the, um, the Wraith Seer. If that gets put into the codex. I don't think they will because that's a Forge Lord. Yeah. Unless they bring out the classic. That's what I'm saying. So there's the bend. It's pretty much at a 90 degree angle. I think it'll work. Just gotta put the kneecap in place. I'm just gonna pin the knee in place since I have the drill bit and the pieces of metal out already. <clears throat> I think that'll work, right? His leg is up like that. His other leg is like that. Yeah, I think that works. The more I think about it, the more I might actually jump in. Star Wars League. Do it. No balls. What you say? <laughs> I said no balls. No balls. I will give you the lead. You. What you do? So I think I'm gonna put the knee. Right the knee's gonna go right about there. So that means I gotta green stuff in a bunch of shit all around there to match to make that match up. Oh, so, I forgot they uh, they expanded to the Clone Wars. That's a really good one. Legion, yeah. They should have started at Clone Wars. Yeah, because they would have been. I'm actually surprised they didn't start with. Uh, First Order versus what? What is it? The Resistance or whatever? Oh, yeah. Because that's what the movie the movies were when uh, the game came out. Yeah. But they also, you know, expanding on Clone Wars. Just, you know, surprised that they chose the uh, Empire versus the uh, Rebel Alliance. Like it's just old. Yeah, I from the old series. I don't. I don't. I think that was a, a slight mistake. Starting everybody off. At the Empire versus the Rebels, because it's really not a very interesting fight. It's not like the Clone Wars. Clone Wars, right? It's many different worlds, different army configurations. Like it's it's more conducive to a war game setting. Just basically guesstimating where I'm putting the, these pins. Um, Lord Jeb, my favorite configuration is sword and flamers. Yeah, same here for the wraith lords. Yeah, um, just the way again the way I play my Eldar. The Wraith Lords really are just there to just soak up fire. That's really their job. Walkers are better for weapon platform. Yes, definitely. Well, because they get, you know, they're a little bit cheaper. And, yeah. They're just they're just a better option. Plus, they have Infiltrate. I think where they used to. I don't know if they still do, but. Kim, I still feel like 95% of all conversions I see are just people destroying a perfectly good model and they did it to cover up not so good painting skills. 
this is my opinion and the way I feel and I'm not saying any of you should feel the same and my and myself never do conversions unless I absolutely have to I really hate building models <laughs> yeah I hear you Kim um, I don't hate building models but it's my least favorite aspect of this when I was younger building models was a lot of fun you know cars spaceships stuff like that right just building models then once I got into Warhammer and all of this rig rigmarole, um, yeah, I started really kind of getting into the painting aspect of it all. Am I doing that right? I might have to put a slight bend in it. Yeah, because we'll have it right around there, right? That's where we want that kneecap. It's ready. Do 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 do. Uh -uh, okay. Slap a little glue. Jesus, 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 J
no, that's pretty much where I want it though. Yeah, because I want the kneecap kind of in the middle. So yeah. That's it right there. Okay. Glue it up. Glue it up. Time we had. Yeah. Holy kermos, we got only ten minutes left. The real question, Chris, is do I want phase one or phase two clones? Because they have because they have duplicates of the clone, the Republic line, where it's phase one and then, you know, units that are phase one or units that are phase two on it. Um I'm kind of partial to the armor that the clone troopers that look their, their helmets almost look like stormtroopers. They have like the front grill and everything. Those are phase two. What's phase, that? Phase one is the one with the fins going down the middle of the helmet. Yeah, they have like the Mandalorian Spartan kind of triangular yeah. T visor thing. No, I like the ones that uh, like in um, at, uh, Revenge of the Sith. In episode three. Yeah. I like the I like that style. So phase two, okay, yeah, and then it's phase two I like. There we go. That is pretty much that knee. Did I need to pin that kneecap into place? Not really. I probably could have just glued it onto the end of that leg there. Was it necessary? Um, probably because. Yeah, because because you imagine, right? Like the little ribby details will come down here, a little bit inside here. I got to rebuild this part of the leg up a bit, and then put some ribbiness in there. But yeah, that's a knee. And so now it's that leg. Oh, next is the ankle. Frick forgot all about the ankle. Yeah. <clears throat> I might have to get rid of this pin that's in the pelvis or in the torso or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, because it's kind of limiting some of that movement there. I think I want more of that kind of action. He thinks. Yeah, this leg is going to come back like that. So. Yeah, so something like along these lines as far as the stance is concerned. Like that. torso will have a bend in it because the sword arm is this arm and that'll be going back so it looks like he's like in a full run I was also thinking too because there's quite a bit of play in the hip joints that maybe a little bit wider stance kind of like like his leg is leaping off the thing there and his other leg's coming up and like a little bit wider gait yeah I think the way these ankle nubs are kind of positioned to kind of messing with me as well. Because I keep thinking like these things here, this detail looks like, like, like a high heel. But I don't think they actually touch the ground, do they? I don't think so. Do Wraith Lords wear high heels? Six minutes left. Oh, it's almost midnight for you, eh, Kim? Or everybody in Norway. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Now then. So we're not going to use... We're going to use this one... The foot, the toe arched. That would be that foot. That's the wrong clipper. moment let's have a look let's have a look at what we can do 
So he has quite a bit of play, even in the, the foot joint. Of course, maybe I, I just did him like he's leaping off an object. So his foot can stay a little bit more right, maybe. Because this is the straight leg. We can angle it with a big bend in it. And we can do it a little bit straight. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, I just glue it into place and just leave it. Or on the other leg, I should say. It's the wrong foot, but I'm thinking of using the same foot. Of course, I had it angled downwards. Yeah, I mean, angling it downwards makes a little bit more sense, I think. Because the, the foot would be relaxed if you were in a, like a leaping pose. Yeah. <clears throat> Kim, three minutes till New Year's here. Three minutes? Yeah, three minutes. T minus. Oh, excuse me. All right, let's clear this foot off. Just so we can start thinking about it realistically here. I guess really I should probably start using some blue tack to kind of work out my pose as it is so far. So this one is going to be touching the ground. Do I want it fully flexed foot, like it's making kind of flat contact with the ground, or that he's like leaping off something, and so his foot would be kind of more extended out, I guess. I mean, I imagine whatever way I want to make the angle work, whatever the final pose is settled upon, I guess I could have him standing on like a rock or whatever and jumping off of it. Something along, like even just using it in a kind of in a straight kind of pose with toes angled. Because I wasn't too sure if I wanted to like remove some of the material here and then put more of a bend into the foot. I don't know if it's entirely necessary because the, the way this ankle is, is that it's, it gives you a nice little join anyway where you can pivot it pretty much any which way you want. Decisions, decisions. Because if I leave it like that, where the heck is my blue stuff? Or my, blue, my sticky tag? Don't fall. Let's grab some of the sticky tag here. Kim, Happy New Year's, fuckers. <laughs> yeah, it's Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's for everybody out in Europe. Of course, if you're watching this after the fact, then obviously you missed the New Year's. 
Lord Jev, nine hours to go here. Nine hours? Uh, we are six hours. So you must be on the west coast. Lord Jev. But yeah. All right. So let's grab a little bit of sticky tack. Sticky tack is perfect for this use of just kind of, you know, working out your pose. So I'm just going to st stick a little bit in there. And then just basically do that. Just to replicate it being glued into place. Yeah, there's gaps and stuff like that. That's fine. Let's do... Oh, I don't have the other foot. That's okay. We'll do the hips. Do the hips. Do, 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 do. Where'd Mac go? He's all quiet. Oh, I, I went to go get pizza. Oh. oh. Well, then you didn't really I... do, did you? Because you just heard me. What? Huh? I, I, I just deafened and muted myself, got in the car, picked up the pizza, and now I've returned. So. Still there? Yeah. What kind of pizza? I got pizza. Uh, Jets. Because it's the one thing that's down here, pretty much. That's within like five, ten minutes. So I got wings, I got bread, I got pizza. I also got a salad. Because you all need some roughage in your life. Yeah, usually. What did I do with the rest of my, my sticky tag? Holy shit, am I going crazy? Where, what did I do with the rest of my sticky tag? <laughs> oh well. Yeah, so the torso will bend back because that arm is going to be straight and then it's going to go backwards with the sword trailing behind. The other arm will come up forward like that. So I guess the torso is fine as it is. It's really just more or less getting this leaping position happening. In hindsight, I probably could have bent the leg a little bit more. Well, what did you want to do? I'm reposing the legs of my Wraith Lord. Mm -hmm. And the angle is, you know, it's almost a 90 degree angle bend in the leg. Mm -hmm. But I probably could have went more. And again, it's all about how you position everything else. And yeah. I'm thinking something like that, like a wide stance. Kind of leaping off a rock. So I think this foot actually should be more straight, right? So it should be the straight foot. Because he's got two sets of feet. That's a that big yeah, so Let's do this. Uh, where's my tack? I thought I had more tack over here. What the hell did I do with it? What did I do? Where'd it go? It didn't just roll away on me, did it? Alright. Well, this is more of a straight foot, but flat foot. Try to see how that looks in this position. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I definitely could have brought the 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 knee in more. Here, that looks a little too ridiculous. Let's make it a little bit more like that. So like the legs kind of close together. It doesn't quite have the same vibe. Eh, kind of. But yeah. I think I want to go for a more open stance though. Something a bit more like like that. And I think I'm going to have him leaping off of a rock. And that's what we're going to go with. So just a bent foot, but like touching some material here. Just so he kind of has like this floating like appearance. Not floating, but you know, he's leaping off an object, right? The torso definitely should be bent forward more. It looks something like that. Yeah. I think that is the beginning of the pose. Because then torso has a slight turn, so the left side comes forward more. There's not enough tack in there. But yeah, something along the, those lines, like that. Now the next question is, is, do I put the cloth in place? Hmm? Do? You want the cloth the loin? The loin? Have her. <laughs> the loin you cloth? Want, yeah. Yeah, you want it or not. Do you actually want it? But I have to go to the cloth. Yeah, do it. I want it. I have to go to <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, that'll work. I think he's, I think he's. You could even sculpt it to be slower. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to sculpt a, a, a loincloth. I really don't feel like it. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much the pose for the legs. I don't have no idea if the arms are going to be any more difficult or what. There is an arm that bends straight back. And it is pretty straight. So it should work. The only issue might be the shoulder. Getting the shoulder to come back a bit. I think it'll work. How was that? Kim was outside watching the fireworks, but it's snowing like hell. Does it snow in hell? Uh, so I went inside to finish watching it from my living room window. <laughs> All the fireworks. Yeah. Alrighty, I think we're done for now. All I know is it's gonna be a fun night for me. Oh. I live next to I live next to the two fire stations. So every time some asshole like blows himself up with a firework, I'm gonna get to hear the fire fire trucks. Well Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a pain. I mean it is a little bit, but they, I mean, I guess the flip side is if I ever set myself on fire, they're right there, so. That's, that, that's the way to look at the positive. If you ever set yourself on fire, that's, uh. If I, if I ever decide that I need to, like, immolate myself like a Buddhist monk, like I think I'll Buddhist be Like a Buddhist monk. 
That's quite a reference. Like, why specifically a Buddhist monk? Oh, uh, you don't remember that the, famous picture? Oh, I remember it. Okay. <laughs> you guys, you guys talk about like you talk about history like I wasn't there. <laughs> no, I'm not talking like you weren't there. I'm talking like you weren't paying attention. <laughs> anyway, alrighty, we're done. Um, no. Last words of wisdom, no, Matt. Uh, as we learned yesterday, don't stick your dick in crazy. That's the best life advice. Yeah, there we go. Don't stick it in crazy. Boop. What do you got? I feel like I gave my advice. Uh, <laughs> Come on. What do you got? Uh, don't come to me expecting to me to be impressed with something fucking simple. There we go. Or don't don't uh. Don't, uh, don't reward mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> mediocrity. Don't reward mediocrity. Gotcha. Yeah. Kim says, Happy New Year's, fuckers, and poor captain with all the shit going outside his house. <laughs> and remember uh, and remember to shave your nuts. It's been a fun couple days. Did you see the pictures from yesterday? No. I, I posted them. Uh, I got woke up at quarter to five, uh, no, quarter to six in the morning yesterday because someone was beating my neighbor's car with a fire hose. Oh, nice. Did you post it in the Discord? Yeah. No, I didn't uh, It was that. either a lover's quarrel or a drug deal gone gone wrong, or possibly both. We're not sure. Gotcha. Where'd you post it? In general. Oh, no. I didn't see that. Huh. Alrighty, let's get the oh, hell out the of dude, here. 